Exhaust systems, they're incredibly controversial and we've played with them a lot over the years. We've had them out the bonnet. We've had them out the front. We've had them with potatoes in them. And we've even had tractor flappers. So today in this episode of Cash vs Trash, we're going to be getting a mad exhaust all the way from Japan and Marty's going to be making one out of trash. Unless you're driving an electric car, there's a good chance that you've got an exhaust system. Now your engine is basically a giant air pump and you've got to get that spent air and gas out the back of the car somehow. Now there's a whole lot of science and a whole lot of physics as to how that works. There's also a whole lot of rubbish about it on the internet. So today, we're going to see if there's any real difference between making your own exhaust or buying one. We're going to be working on the Purge Bro and the Swift Sport. So before we kick off, let me show you what I got direct from Japan. This here is a Monster Sport exhaust that I got through Import Monster from Japan. So this here is a direct factory replacement performance exhaust out of Japan and is one of the best systems that you can get for a Suzuki Swift. Monster Sport was a performance workshop set up in 1983 by Nobuhiro Tajima, nicknamed Monster. Former rally driver for Suzuki and known for his triumphs at Pikes Peak Hill Climb and Silverson Race to the Sky, which he won eight times. In 1986, he established Suzuki Sport, the in-house sports division of Suzuki. As well as exhausts, they sell tons of stuff for the Swift platform, including intakes, brakes, clutches, piston kits, bracing and more. So there it is, that is my Monster Sport axle back. So I thought I actually had a cat back, turns out that I didn't probably have been spending too much time buying random stuff off the internet and it's sending me crazy. I do have other exhaust components, but some of those like headers need a tune. So for now, we're gonna be comparing this with whatever Marty makes. For my exhaust, I have nothing. So I'm gonna dive into a couple of scrap metal bins and see what I can find. All right, so here's what we've got with the factory exhaust system. We have some headers, a cap that comes directly off the headers and is integrated into it. Then we've got an oxygen sensor. It actually looks like a wideband one too, looking at it. And then we have this flange here. So replacing the manifold is expensive because as an aftermarket pass, I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, replacing this back bit is not so expensive. Now it actually looks Okay, um, that flange, it can be disconnected. This muffler's pretty small, smaller than I would expect. And most of the muffling is happening up here. And muffling is good because it's quiet, but it's bad because it can restrict flow. So the idea is to try and give it as much of a head start with flow as I possibly can using recycled parts. So I'm gonna go dump, dive into the uh, scrap metal bin and see what I can find from other projects that might be able to fit into this space to make it look cool, sound cool, and hopefully unlock some performance. I think I've found exactly what I'm looking for in the scrap bin, a JDM style cannon from a 180SX that is gonna be absolutely perfect on the Purge Bro. The first job is to cut off the brackets so I can see if it'll fit. So I've found this old muffler that's been sitting around for ages that no one clearly wants because it's been in the scrap metal bin. And I'm gonna start chopping it up Dude. and use it on Dude, mine. no, no, you can't. Dude. This, this is, this from the this scrap is off bin. my 180SX. This is in the scrap metal bin. Why'd you put it in there? I didn't put it in there. You probably just put, put it in there so you could get a shot did of you pulling you it out again. You put it in there. I didn't put it in there. You did. You put a new exhaust on your 180 and this was in the scrap metal bin. But this is the this is the original 180 exhaust when we put it back to original yeah, again. Yeah, this muffler's gonna fit perfect on my purge, bro. That's funny. There's some um, Lavorg stuff that you can no, use no, up no, the no, back. No, that's the wrong size. This is what I need. Come on, dude. Dude, you gave me the trash car. I'm allowed to use the trash on my trash car. I That's would never, rules. ever, ever, under any circumstances, as your mate, take a bit of your exhaust to fix my car. We're going to give it a chop right there. We're going to add it to the rest of the Fujisubo system. That's my and shit. And then, um, you're still talking. That's my shit. It's, it's you can't ours. Just take it. This is our shit. Can I have it? Except for that time I did. May I have your trash? to put on my trash. You just have to ask. Matt, can I please have my, this trash to put on my trash and I'll buy you lunch that's not trash. After saying no because he reckons he might need it one day, I started cutting it up anyway. If you want to try this at home, visit exhaust shops for leftovers of high powered cars with quality factory systems. Oh, <laughs> that's Perfection. freaking amazing, dude. Perfection, look at that. I've never seen a Purge Bro with a cannon. Is that a thing? I'm sure it's a thing in the UK. No, but have you ever seen one? There's not many Purge Bros in Australia. There but... isn't. Wonder why. The French car has no issues being tickled by my Aussie welding torch, and I was able to reuse the old hangers to make them fit the back of the Purge Bro. I'm using a MIG welder because it's easy, cheap and fast, and time is money. So far, with the exception of one expander joint to get from the one and three quarter inch uh, factory system into the three inch system that I'm now at, I've been able to use entirely recycled parts. I don't even know what this is from. 
actually. It's been sitting around for so many years, I actually have no idea. I just found it in the corner of the shed. Uh, this is 180SX exhaust parts. This, I think, is from this. I don't know. Anyway, what I've now got to do is get from the muffler to here, which is a little bit tricky because there's bends and stuff, but I'm just going to cut out the bends as I can from these parts and then join them up with the welder and I will have a three inch sports exhaust system for basically no money. This job takes a bit of practice to do well, but that's the beautiful thing about creating your own parts. You have the sweat, tears, burns, experience, and knowledge to do it again. And that's something you can take with you into battle against the Goliath of high value mods, making the victory that much sweeter. That's my exhaust system. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And uh, now it's time to talk money. Well, my Monster Sports system was 79,200 yen, which is about 880 bucks. Uh, and it was about another $400 to get it shipped to Australia. So I'm sitting at around about, it's around about 1,300 bucks. 1,300 bucks just for a rear muffler. Yes. Okay. Now, I haven't looked under the car yet, but I've got a feeling that the reason that people only change this is because the rest of it's going to be excellent already from the factory. <laughs> well, the stuff that was on my Peugeot was a bit yuck, and I am still retaining, you could argue, a yuck part of the Peugeot exhaust system, but the cost was low. Like, scrap value, we're talking less than 20 bucks, um, and you could argue that you could buy some of these, like, leftover systems. Everything here was leftover. It wasn't going to be used for anything else. This resonator, I don't even know what it's from. That's from your old 180SX exhaust that we replaced, so... Yeah, pretty happy with that. Bit of MIG gas, and you got yourself an exhaust system, and a bit of time. That's what thing. we did work out, though, is that based on the weight of all of that, which was 12 kilos, and the value of stainless being a dollar ten approximately, this here, thirteen hundred dollars by weight. That there, thirteen bucks. Oh. Thirteen versus thirteen hundred, mum. I'm still very keen to see how that looks on the car, though. So we should whack it on. That's true. But before we do that. It's time to bring in an expert and see whether we really should be spending the cash or whether we can make it out of trash. This is our good friend Dale. He has tuned thousands of cars, worked in an exhaust shop for over 20 years, so knows a little bit about exhaust systems. He also came to LA with us to help road tune our WRX with our tractor flapper and built a drag car that can do eight second quarter miles. Isn't that right? Sixes, mate, sixes. Did six? Yeah. Did it really? Yep. What's the difference between six and eight? About 2,500 horsepower. Okay. <laughs> I knew it did sixes, of course I did. Dale, thank you for coming down. Can we start with Monster Sport? Is this good? Is it trash? What did I buy? Can you give me a little review of this thing? So I had a quick look. It looks really well made. Nice mandrel bends, doubled up brackets so the brackets won't snap off. Extra reinforcement, the pipe here so it won't snap out of the back of the muffler. Is that a thing that happens? Yes. Yeah, the pipes flex and then they break out the corner of the muffler. Yeah. It, it's very well made, nice piece of, piece of kit. Okay. Can you see differences in your time over the last couple of decades? If something's made in Japan versus made in China, is it, is it instantly kind of visible where they've come from or is it not that easy to see? Uh, these days, it's a lot closer, but back in the early days, yeah, the China stuff was, was not wonderful. China these days has picked up the, the quality on their, on their parts. So it is harder to tell, but Japanese is definitely still yeah. better. Quality. And there's also R&D in that too, right? Like you actually have to spend the time designing this and a lot of these Japanese companies will also take a lot of time to test it. They'll go to a racetrack and do back to back and give you that little graph, you know, you always see it on the promotional material. Yeah, look, Japan's been a motoring powerhouse forever, basically. So, yeah. you know, they have people like tuning houses like Monster Sport that will do this stuff and provide you with quality gear like this. Now, if we can talk about power quickly, best case scenario, the car in its stock form made 79 kilowatts. In your time tuning and changing things, if you just put this on in a best case scenario, am I gonna see any performance benefit? Maybe five kilowatts. Okay, which on a car that makes such little power is actually significant. Yeah, so the rear muffler is generally the most restricted part because it keeps the noise down. Yeah. So when you go to something like this, which is probably got no baffles in it, it's just fiberglass packed, it will you know, flow more, which will make more horsepower. Awesome. Well, let's go from 1300 bucks to $13 and have a look at what Marty's got over here. So I'll just give you a little rundown, Dale. So in order to make it fit, and I was limited by what parts I had, so the only fancy bit was this that I hacked off another thing, which is like one and three quarter inch yep. to three inch 
because I had way more three inch stuff available in the, in the scrap bin. So I ended up using most level 180SX exhaust and I don't actually know what that is. I can't even identify what that is. It's something. Um, look, the resonator looks decent quality. The rear muffler's pretty hacked up, you know, the brackets and... But for 13 bucks, plus a couple of hours work, it'll work fine. It'll probably be pretty loud. Is, it, is there any... Uh, people often talk about this whole thing about back pressure and all that. Is there any real downside going from such a small size exhaust to just suddenly opening it up? Oh, look, that car probably doesn't need a three inch exhaust, but it's what you had lying around. Um, going too big will definitely hurt performance, but I don't think you're gonna notice Notice the difference. Dale, can I dive into that for a second? Yeah. Why does an exhaust that's too big harm your performance? So you need some amount of back pressure in this in the system to help with the scavenging effect in the in the motor. And on a turbo car, generally you can't go too big in exhaust, but on an NA car, if you're too big, it'll won't scavenge enough and it will actually affect performance. Not heaps, but not it will. in a big way. Can we now dive into scavenging, please? That's where the exhaust will help pull the exhaust out of the other cylinders. Yeah. Um, when the valve opens. Yep. So it's a, it's a bit of that one's always a bit controversial, isn't it? People are like, oh, it's not a thing. Back pressure thing. Yes, it is, and people argue about it constantly. Yeah. But it's a thing, right? Properly. It is a thing. Yeah. If yeah. you've got a proper design set of headers, they they will help scavenge from the other cylinders, and you will make more power significantly. Yeah. Okay. Factory manifolds probably aren't such a thing because they're not usually tune length and all yeah. that. But in these factory manifolds, it goes directly into this giant cat converter anyway. Oh, so that's a mini cat. Both yeah. So them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. A mani cat? I didn't even know that was a word. Yeah, it's called a mani cat. A like manifold and a cat in that. one. Well, I think what's interesting about that, Marty, is that right now you are replacing pretty much all of it, but eventually um, I'm going to be replacing headers as well, which I already have, but that is going to require a tune or a flash of some kind, which is why we're not doing that yet at this stage. So, Dale, let me ask you then in a question before we stick this stuff on the car. From what you're seeing right now, and I know we've put you in a tricky position, $1,300 or $13, cash versus trash, what do you reckon? Oh, the trash is going to sound good. The 1300 bucks is going to look good. Okay. What about performance, though? This is we're, we're making these track cars. I think this will pick up more than that. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Even though this is like so much more exhaust pipe, yeah, you think, think that's going to work better? Probably too big for that car. Really? Oh, yeah. Right. Well, people, let's install the exhaust, get them on. Dale, thank you very much for no coming problems. down. It was Where's awesome to see you again. Uh, good luck getting into the, uh, the fives with your drag car. Martin, let's install these things. And then on an upcoming episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are going to be going back to the dyno before we hit the track again. And we'll see just how much power we've made or how much we've lost. Now that we've heard from our expert, it's time to start installing the exhaust system onto the Suzuki Swift. Using the exhaust hanger removal tool and our Ryobi side dacker, we can get rid of the factory system. And hopefully like the other Japanese parts that I've bought, this monster sport piece of kit should bolt straight on without any modifications at all. So it turns out under here, technically we kind of do have a catback system because where the catalytic converter is here, there's no other brakes in the pipe. It goes all the way back down there. Now I've checked with monster sport. They don't make a center pipe. Why don't they make a center pipe? Possibly because this is two inch the whole way anyway, which is probably gonna be the best size we actually need for performance, yeah, right? It's two inch, uh, particularly the front part is really nice. It, like it changes material here somewhere because it's really nice sort of like, you know, typical car grade stainless there. And then back here, it looks a bit more like mild steel, but it is two inches, which is about right for that engine. Yeah. Um, you do have multiple cat converters as well. Cause you've got the one in the, in the header, which That's is doing right, most of the work. One in the headers and then one here and then, as well. And then one here. So, you know, you've, you have to have a catalytic converter where we you live, you gotta have one. Yep. So there has to, one needs to remain in there, but what you do with the rest of it is kind of up to you for flow and noise. Yeah, I mean, really in an ideal situation, what we'd be looking at doing is just chopping all of that out, throwing it in the bin, and then just putting a high flow cat here and a bit of pipe there. So yeah. that's probably gonna be the next stage and probably when I get to headers, which will also require the tune. It's, exactly. It's, uh, and there it kind of unfolds and compounds into a bit more of a detailed thing. So I think for now in our first test, um, You've got a little hot dog resonator in yours, don't you? I do. Um, and you got a cat? Yes, I do. In and the then you got the pipe. So mine is going to be similar. Yep. So we'll put the rear box on there and uh, move on. And we will. I'll be seeing you again later. <laughs> Using the Translate app on my iPhone, I can decipher that I need to install these little heatproof stickers to stop the bumper melting. After that, it's a straightforward swap. And I can tell you this is a very well-made piece of kit. 
The Swift will be getting a full exhaust eventually, and I've already got the headers, but that will require a tune, so that's happening later. For now, to keep it fair, I'll just be swapping out the rear end, but how good does that look? And now, it's time to have a listen. <laughs> That's the Swift, now let's check out the Purge Bro. Your poo goat sounds great. Singing the song of my Peugeot people. I'm, I'm shocked. It goes poo goat, proper yeah, pee plate. But considering that's all junk, yes. it sounds way better than I expected. It doesn't sound farty or droney or resonating, it just sounds good. It's incredible, and of course mine... Sounds good it also. Bolts, it sounds good, it, it bolts straight on, it looks really nice, and I think really it comes down to the factors of do you want your exhaust to look nice, you don't have a welder, you got no skills, you just want to stick it on there, then yes, of course, spend the cash. Yep. But for 13 bucks worth of scrap, yep. and I think you can't go wrong. A major difference as well is, so that exhaust was 13 bucks in materials, yes to buy the equipment, which I know some of you are thinking, but you had to have a welder and a cutter thing. That you might pay the same as the muffler for the first one to, to gear yourself up, but then you can make exhaust for all your Peugeot mates. Why? <laughs> why would you? Why would you make it? Why would you make any more for all your mates? With you Peugeot? don't have any Peugeot mates, though. Dude, my inbox is flooded with new mates who are trying to sell me their. That's Peugeot. actually true. What is going on? I don't know. Our website's being pummeled by people. Why are you all trying to get rid of your why, Peugeots? And why to me? Why am I now the Peugeot guy? Who knows, Martin? Know. Anyway, so where are we at? Cash versus trash. If you want your exhaust to look nice and you want an easy install, I'd say spend the cash. When it actually comes to the performance of it, which is what this is about, yep. Martin, I'm, I'm on team trash. Can I tell you where I am? Team cash. In my experience, I know, in my experience, getting a really nicely made exhaust system. So forget buying the junk stuff. If you're gonna buy junk, you might as well make it. You gotta stand on the cash side now, Martin. If you're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy, buy the cheap junk that never fits properly anyway. All you end up doing is doing what I had to do. It's happened to us. Oh, you end up remaking, on. exactly. Yeah. You end up remaking it, you spend more time, you get the shits because you think you've bought something that's bolt on. If you are just get, want to get something that's really good, made with a CNC mandrel bender, made by a quality business that's been doing it for a long time, cash all the way. Unless you want to go absolute trash like what I did, then okay, yeah, there's some savings. But you also got to find the scrap, which luckily we had lying around. Uh, go to an exhaust shop, by the way, if you want to source that stuff. A lot of the time they have it waiting out the front for the scrappies. You can go down, give them a sandwich or a case of beer. You never know what you might get. Anyway, that's where we've ended up. Of course, the series will be continuing with more modifications next time. But what do you think? We're keen to hear about your story, so let us know down below. Martin, there it is. Cass, what's next? Awesome, awesome. Is it, um, I think, I believe it's... Um, is it seats? I think we're moving to the inside. I think we're moving to the insides. Anyway, see you next time on Cash vs Trash. By the way, on our second channel, MCM TV 2, uh, we've been getting some of the experts to do some extra videos, deep diving on some of the aspects of the video. Click on the thing to check those out. And we'll see you next time on Cash vs Peugeot.